Damn. You know something? You you talked about, and I want to go backwards for a second because there's so much history in you. Uh, I want to get as much out of this conversation as humanly possible. You said the first artist that you uh, managed, and I think at that time you were still working with, with Shaq Kim and, and Queen mm-hmm. Latifah, uh, mm-hmm. Nonchalant and Fushnikis. Yes. What was, were, were, you know, I don't think people give Shaquille O'Neal the credit he deserves. Uh, mm. Gosh, move! We ain't got nothing to prove. Nothing to Those prove. What? Was doing yeah. their thing back in the days, yes. right alongside of Daz Effects. They, they, and that, yeah. that was the golden age. Of Four Christ. righteous teachers. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, which would did did you have hands on uh, management or or any hands on with with Shaq when he was down with uh, Shaq Fu? So Shaq was moving. So I came in and Shaq was already Shaq. So and I and so. Before that, I was already cool with Shaq because me and Dennis Scott were friends from my Jodeci days and stuff. So when Shaq got drafted, he was in Orlando and all that, we kind of, that's where we first kind of met. And then I ended up at Flav Unit. And Shaq was taking the food sneakers with him every place. So in that instance, he was opening up a lot of doors for the guys by letting them roll with him. Then Jive gave him his solo deal. And that's when they dropped the Shaq Fu video game. And his project. And so that was kind of the end of Shaq and the Fushnikas. But, yeah, I got a chance to make some of those, get some of those Shaq experiences, All-Star Weekend in Utah. Shaq took us all those type of things. Got a chance to experience some really cool, you know. It's funny because what I always tell people is I remember even back then, Shaq was saying, like, yo, I'm never going to cash any of my NBA checks. And we was going, what? what talking? And he was like, yo, the endorsements. I'm going to live off my endorsement deal and stuff like that. And so to see – this time later, having watched his whole career and everything, and know that Shaq is still getting his endorsement money and still eating great off of just endorsements, I, 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 whenever I see him, I always tell him I respect that. He stuck with the plan. He didn't get pulled off the course. Yo, it's so crazy that you say that, um, you know, because it just shows the business mind of some of these people from very, very early on. Um, mm-hmm. For Shaq to be a young I mean, let's let's just call it what it is. He was top of the world. This guy's seven feet yeah. two inches tall. Uh, Twism, the world is mine. Remember exactly. that was his joint. Yep, Twism, the, the world mm-hmm. is mine. This dude was was top of the charts. He came on a, on a, on a hip hop side. Actually, got a deal. Job gave him a deal and sold a gold album. Like yeah, Shaq was the real deal. Yeah. So, to, to, to hear that Shaq had the mindset back then, yo, I'm not cashing no NBA checks, that's insane. Mm-hmm. That That's insane no. because most people, especially that young, they got to burn through a few few mil before their <laughs> eyes open up. They got to yes. damn near be, be bankrupt oh, before yeah. they say, yo, you know what? Damn, I did it all wrong. I ball till I fall, but I got nothing to show for it. I got to yeah. get back to work. That's amazing that he said that. You know the only other person I heard, heard, ever heard say that? Funk Flex. Flex, okay. you know, for years ago was like, yo, I don't cash none of my of my Hot 97 checks. He was like, I never did, which is mm-hmm. crazy. And that and that dude been working at, at on He's radio for 35 years. Been <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> yeah. Oh, I man. Went okay. to him. Um, now I was ahead. thinking, Flex went to, so he's from the Bronx, I'm from the Bronx, so he went to Al Savior Lutheran, and I went to Fordham Prep, so, you know, yeah, that's yeah, well over 30 years. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy, because I'm from the Bronx, too. Uh, I, I went to golf, and Sam Golf is up in the BX. Yeah, yeah, nah, I went to uh, Chris Brooks, so I went to Kennedy, too. Of course, too. Chris Brooks and, so, and Chris Light. Chris Brooks, yes, went to golf, I remember the first time, <laughs> totally up to this one, but so I'm one of the few people that actually played ball and was in the industry. Not an industry person that kind of played basketball. I was a basketball player that ended up in the industry. Like I was in college for basketball. So, and when I came home, when everybody else was Hamptons and all that shit, I was down on 55th, West 4th, Brooklyn, Old Place. And I'll never forget the first time I went up against Chris before he went to West Virginia. It's still high school. And, and all you knew is that they was calling him the monkey Jesus because <laughs> yep. he could jump. And he was just so strong. And so little 150 pound me trying to guard Chris and he jumps up and he taps his, the ball on the back of his neck. Now we in high school and I'm eager and I'm like, I'm stopping this. 
and I jump up and try and rub it. And he takes me and the ball to the rim, <laughs> drops the ball off and me <laughs> right on the floor at Gompers. The school goes crazy. I was like, what just happened? Oh, like, he, he did it at Gompers? It was at Gompers. We went at Gompers. Remember, you used to play a home and home with everybody. Yes, yes. So it was at Gompers. And you know that gym lost its mind. I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out of the building fast enough. I think, I don't know, I say, I'm like, I think some of that madness and playing high school ball and the way we used to scream on people and things that happened made me, always made me feel comfortable on the stage, even if I was on stage doing stuff, not performing, but just being in front of, as I tell people, when you're in the industry, just because you're not on stage singing, there's so many other jobs to do that you can be on stage in front of 18,000 people every night too, because you might just be, Someone's security. So you're standing on stage. You're still, that audience is looking up and they're looking at you. You're a background singer. You're, you're playing. You're, you're still going to be in front of a lot of people. And when people be like, I'm shy, I don't like to be in front of people, this ain't the business for you because you're going to be in front of people if you are on the out in that space. So I, I actually probably owe Chris Brooks some thanks to some of my success. <laughs> like, yeah, RIP Chris Brooks. I mean, that guy was, was Charles Barkley, like yes. literally in high school. Yes, this <laughs> is strong as hell, but you know, yeah, yeah, that Gompers. dude was beyond strong. Yeah, he was definitely all right. Peter, but sorry, got off the music side to my basketball. It's crazy. I, I I had no idea you was you was playing ball in in our gym. Like that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Basketball took me okay. a lot of places. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.